Cathy, thank you very much for joining us on Kelly TV. It is very much appreciated. There's lots that we want to get through in this mm -hmm. in-depth interview. And I'll start with, let's reflect on the season so far. Well, I think it's been a bit of uh, an up and down season so far. Obviously, with a number of disappointments, things have not necessarily gone as well as we would have wanted. A lot of change uh, in the club as well. But what we now want to do is to focus on the future and take what we think is our rightful place within Scottish football. I think first of all, then, we want to talk about the football department. I think it's been fair to say um, there's been a lot of concerns and questions over the two transfer windows that we've had this season so far. Mm -hmm. And I think the general direction of the club has been questioned on more than one occasion by quite a lot of the support. How would you like to react to that? Yeah. Well, look, I absolutely get why Kelly fans have perhaps been concerned about the way things have gone. Um, first of all, you know, in the kind of summer window, obviously, with the change of manager at that time, with uh, Steve having left, moving on, we've appointed James as the head of football operations and we wanted to come into this transfer window and really see how we could get some players in um, and take things forward. And look, I've been a Kelly fan for pretty much most of my life. I remember way back to the heady days of 64, 65 when we won the league. I've seen the depths of being relegated down into the second division and having to climb back up again. And I know that there are people who really passionately care about the future of this club and want the best for it. And that emotion, you know, is something that's there for the Kelly fans, so I completely understand that. When it comes to the likes of a transfer window, how key is the communication between the football department and the board? Well, I think the communication is the key. And if we look at this particular transfer window, of course, we had the manager and the head of football operations working away. They had players who they had identified and they were tracking and they wanted to bring in. And we did some business early uh, in the transfer window. And I think uh, both Harry Bunn and Nicky Kabamba are showing already that they're going to be good additions to the squad. And there were disappointments that we didn't get some of the players that perhaps we would have wanted in. There's no doubt about that. You've mentioned a couple of times now our new head of football operations, a man that's no stranger, James Fowler. Is that structure something that the club have been looking at for quite a long time? And are you, as a board, now happy with how that's operating? Mm. I think the important thing for us was that we know if we want to be up there competing with other clubs, have perhaps got more resources and you know a, a bigger uh, opportunity to do things with those resources, that we had to get our structure right. That meant having a look not just at the football department but behind the scenes um, as well. But in terms of the football department, we wanted a head of football operations to come in who was going to review the whole of the football operations right across the club first team, reserves, the academy, all the youth players and indeed the women's team as well and try and get something in place to take us forward including through uh, putting in place a new scouting and recruitment system. So the board, it would be fair to say, are now happy and are starting to see the benefits of James and this role that's been developed? Well, I think it's going to take a bit of time. We always knew it was going to take a bit of time, you know, to get James to kind of settle in. I think uh, he himself, you know, had some targets that he wanted to meet in terms of getting players in. He knows what he wants to do um, across the piece. Uh, and the board and James and indeed Alex now as, as the new manager have been in contact regularly to try and ensure that we are taking things forward. Like you say, there's been a lot of restructuring behind the scenes at the club. The board have been going through things with a fine tooth comb. What sort of lessons have been learned and, and what can we expect from club operations going forward? Well, I think if we look, um, for example, at the new ticketing system that was put in, um, it was important because we were listening to fans who were saying they wanted that upgraded. We know there were teething problems with that. People have worked very hard behind the scenes to resolve that with Ticket Co. We're now looking at having a new database um, of fans which will enable us going forward to you know, work in a, a better way um, to give fans what they want. We've also had a number of changes around trying to get more media and communications, getting information out, a whole range of different things there as well. Like interviews like this? Well, interviews like this being one of the things, but I think it's also the case that we now have Kelly TV, for example, the recently launched Kelly Nation, which seems to be already in episode one proving uh, quite popular. Social media channels, you know, there's podcasts have been put in place as well. There's still, of course, all the work that gets done in the match day programme, whole range of things to get the message out there and get the information out there that fans want. 
What would you say then on top of that has improved when we look at obviously a lot of fans will be disappointed from Europe um, it would be nice to be there next season but there's been lots of positives on top of that as well including for the first time in a long time having more fans in our own ground than an old firm team. Well, look, first of all, in Europe, I mean, I was as disappointed uh, as anybody else in that. However, we have to pick up ourselves, get on with it. The guys on the pitch have done that. They're getting out there and getting on with things. But I think one of perhaps the most significant decisions that we took in terms of listening to fans' views and opinions was to change the whole atmosphere around old firm matches because it was fans that were saying to the board, we don't feel safe coming along, we don't like the atmosphere, and why is it that the Kelly fans are not being put first? So we took that decision, which a number of people said was a brave decision. Mm -hmm. It's got financial implications. We believe we can offset, or at least partially offset some of those by getting our crowds up at home matches. And it was great after the last Old Firm match for people to be positively saying, do you know what, I brought my kids along to an Old Firm match for the first time, I walked in, I felt safe, and I really enjoyed it. And for the first time, we did outnumber the Old Firm fans. And what I would want to do is encourage people, come along, get behind the team on those matches as well, and let's have a killy atmosphere really vocal in the old firm matches. It allows, I think, as well, for families to come along to these games. We've got the, the QTS Moffat family stand, the fan zone out the back, so it really gives the, the fans to engage in games maybe they haven't been to before as well, and it gets them through the gate and it gets an all-round better match day experience. Well, we want a good match day experience for everybody. We want people to be able to bring their kids along. I remember the excitement as a kid myself when you came along for the first time and the kind of atmosphere and everything else. And now, of course, we've got the opportunity to improve the fan zone, you know, to have more activities in there. And we've got a working group together to look at how we do that. But just that whole match day experience and getting people in there, getting behind the team, including the old firm games, I think that was a really significant move. And again, as I said, that came directly from fans and the board listening. Let's talk about Kelly 150. Obviously, our mm -hmm. 150th anniversary continues. There has been a lot going on, and the board, the trust, everyone around the club has kind of came together to work together to make things happen. Yeah, maybe it's just worth um, recalling some of the things that have been done, because of course we had the right at the outset we had the big uh, event organised by the Commander Football uh, Supporters uh, Association, which was absolutely fantastic. We've then had, you know, the Hamden Museum exhibition, mm -hmm. which again I think has has proved really good. And of course, the Kelly Trust arranged to get a bus um, of people um, up there. We've got the replica cups now uh, into the Champions Lounge, absolutely special, and people love coming in to see that. And we had the civic reception from the council, which was done in a slightly different way from the usual council events. And that was really good because we had lots of young people there meeting up with players, former players, club officials, management and so on. And out of that has grown the young supporters mm -hmm. clubs that are now in our secondary schools. I think that's absolutely fantastic. I don't know if anyone else does that. I don't, I don't think we do. I was speaking to the provost uh, about that and I think there's a couple of schools around here I've been the very first in the whole of the UK. Mm. At the Ross County game, we had about five or six of them. The William McIlvany campus um, and, and other schools, that's just one of the ones that comes to my head that we did an announcement for. And to have these people here and young kids being so involved in Kilmarnock, that's where the future is, isn't it? Well, we absolutely have to get young supporters uh, in and get them enthused. And it was great to see in the Moffat stand, you know, they're beginning to get their, their banners and their flags. And we've, of course, got the safe standing area um, for the, the Moffat stand mm. as well. Again, a first in the UK, and we've had a lot of uh, very positive media coverage um, around that. And a, a small group of kids beginning to you know, congregate um, in that area and hopefully more will in the future and they're getting uh, quite excited and had a wee drum in in a previous match and you know, beginning to build up that atmosphere. It really is starting to add to the atmosphere. On top of that, we've got the retro kits. Mm -hmm. um, we're filming this just before the first one comes out, the 64-65 kit. We've all seen the pictures in the programme. 
that's a proud thing to be launching now as well. I, I think it's great. I think the retro kits are going to be really popular. Again, the choice of the styles for those came about because of comments and information feedback that came from fans. And I don't think anybody would doubt that the 64-65 season is a very worthy uh, recipient of being... Uh, and they are, of course, limited edition um, and there'll be more to come. So we, we spoke about, we touched there on the, the safe standing, but one thing I think we've all noticed is the trust and the club have really came close together. Now obviously that was going to happen with yourself coming on the board through the Trust in Kelly initiative, but that's a huge step in fan relation. Yeah. I, I think it's really important that the trust and the club are working together because that was always the intention because essentially the Kelly Trust and investing in the club, we're part owners um, you know, as a trust so therefore it's important that we work together we've seen other trust board members other than myself trust members generally getting involved in different things, helping out with the work in the stadium in the summer, they're now involved in match day volunteering and a whole range of different things which wouldn't have been possible before and I think that's all credit to my fellow directors in Kelly um, for making sure that that happens. At the end of the day though I think fans are the lifeblood of, of any club, those are the people that turn out week in week out and pay money for tickets, season tickets and merchandise so to bring everyone together it it really is just that one identity, isn't it? Really, we all have this one common goal. Well, look, at the end of the day, and you know, Kelly fans are like everybody else. Everybody has different views and opinions on different things. And we will perhaps not always agree on certain aspects of the club, or we might have strong views and opinions that give voice. But at the end of the day, the one thing that binds us all together is our love for Kilmarnock Football Club, whether we're directors, staff, players, supporters, or people in the local community. That's what keeps us going, and we need to focus on that. And AGM is probably on the horizon. What can supporters expect mm. from that? Well, we're in the final um, stages of putting together all the material for the AGM, and we will be making an announcement on that shortly. Taking account of what was said at the previous AGM, I think a number of fans want to have some of the information, perhaps on the finances and the, the sort of trends in the club shown in a more visual way, so we we'll want to try and do that in a different sort of presentation, but also to be able to have the opportunity for the directors to lay out what do we see as the future, where do we want Kilmarnock Football Club to be, and what's the way we want to do our business. And I think one of the things that has struck me since being on the board here is Kilmarnock's a club that wants to do business the right way. Mm -hmm. That's actually quite important as a kind of fundamental value of this football club. Communication then as well, as we're talking about the AGM, it's increased. The AGM will obviously allow fans that are in the room to put their mm -hmm. point across, but the communication from the club is it's increased tenfold of late. Well, I think it's important maybe just to recognise that the people who come to the AGM will be those who own shares. Um, the Kelly Trust, of course, get updates, you know, the members who are involved in the Kelly Trust, but there's other fans who perhaps haven't uh, been involved in, in those aspects. It's important that we speak to them as well and get as much information as we can. There's always going to be things that you know we're not able to talk about in detail, contractual um, issues and personnel issues, but we should be able to try and give as much information as we can. So we can do that through the various communication channels we've got through things I've mentioned already, like Kelly TV, uh, the podcast and so on. Uh, but one of the things that I'm now doing is going to have a, a monthly update that will go out through the Kelly Trust, but maybe looks a wee bit more behind the scenes at some of the things that are going on in the club as well as what's happening uh, on the pitch. Can you give us a kind of hint then of maybe some of the big things to come? What can we expect between now and the end of the season for well, I think the most important thing, and I think the directors w would agree with this, is that we want to see good results on the pitch. It's really important uh, that we get behind the guys and the management team and do as much as we possibly can for that. But also the directors, of course, have been talking about, well, how do we develop both the facilities here and plan for the longer term in order that we can attract the players that we want we obviously have some players who are going to be out of contract and we need to be working on that as well to get the squad that we need for the season ahead. Is that a case then as well that James and Alex will come to you as a board and they'll identify the targets they want within budget? Well, of course, we always uh, have to, to talk about the budgets. I, I think uh, both James and Alex would 
hopefully agree that the board has made available resources um, to them and we will continue to do what we can on, on that score. Uh, but there's a lot of conversation and discussion goes on on a regular basis between the football department and the board um, so that we are working together on this. And finally, just to kind of wrap things up, it's been a fantastic insight, but there's always this intrigue about what does Cathy Jameson actually do? So this is your chance to tell us what do you do? Well, uh, it would be quite a long time if I told you everything I did in the course of the week. But look, I mean, when I came on um, the, the board as a director here, I was quite prepared to uh, give a bit of my time. Um, so I only work in my day job um, three days a week now, and I spend most of the rest of the time... Um, supporting some of the work that, that goes on here. So I try to take an active um, involvement in what goes on in the club. The directors have split up into kind of broad categories of who looks after key areas, Billy on the football and stadium side, Phyllis on finance and commercial, and I look after and, and work with um, people uh, on the media team, for example, um, the community side, um, and also looking at supporting the work that gets done on the HR side. So I'm pretty busy um, in and out um, on the days that I'm here. How proud are you then? You know, you've supported Kamana all your life. Um, how proud would you say that you are now to serve on the board and get an insight look and help influence decisions at your club? Well, of course, as, as, a, as a long time uh, Kelly fan, you know, it's an absolute privilege to be involved with the club. And I, and I was doing a bit of, th this will probably sound a bit, uh, a bit boring, uh, but I was actually doing a bit of archiving of old uh, papers and reports and so on uh, in the office in the last week and just realised, you know, what a real history that's there when you see all the things that have gone before and now to be a part of that. So I've got the same responsibilities as any director of any company in terms of legal responsibilities. I've got some additional responsibilities in terms of represent the trust. You know, but at the end of the day, I'm also a fan. So uh, you know, I'm happy to give my time on a voluntary basis to try and help the club in whatever way I can. Well, we certainly look forward to see what else is coming from you, from the rest of the board and the relationship between the trust and the club as well. And we'd like to, to thank you for your time here on Kelly TV, Cathy. Thank you.